whatever you do, don't push this button. Because that will set off the bomb immediately and we'll all be dead. Now, repeat back what I just said. I'm good. Uh-huh. I'm good. That's right. I'm good. No! Now that's the button that will kill everyone! <laughs> ah, that's a look at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. The Marvel gang of heroes is back together in the sequel to protect the universe. And for his take on this and a look at this week's other new movies, let's bring in film critic Richard Krauss. Richard, good to see you. For one day in my life, I would like to be as adorable as Baby Groot. Oh, so Just one day. Cute. But <laughs> who's the voice of the raccoon? Uh, Bradley Cooper. It is. Yeah, okay, I was Bradley trying Cooper. to nail it. And, and, and ah. he, he's not a raccoon. Oh, wait, he's he not? Gets, what what is that? He gets upset in the movie if you call oh. him a raccoon. So this is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Okay. And, you know, when you have a sequel, there's always diminishing returns. You sure. always say, oh, they can't capture that lightning in a bottle that made the first one so much fun. Uh, and they've done it here. This movie feels a bit too long by the time you get to the end, but this scene that we're seeing here is the opening scene. This gives nothing away, but it sets the tone for the movie. So you've got this wild action scene, this creepy, crawly, whatever it is, from outer space comes down. Groot puts on some music, <laughs> baby Groot. Because he's a baby, he's too small to help them fight this awful creature. Uh, so he dances all the way throughout the battle scene. And it's fun and funny and and sort of joyous. And it's a, movie, it's a word that you don't use often sure. in these kind of big superhero movies. But these characters spend as much time joking and laughing as they do in battle or, you know, flying these space uh, crafts around. And there's something that's really infectious about it. And mm. that the opening dance scene with Baby Groot you, is you one keep of the, talking about this. One this of the funniest be good. things I've seen in a long really? time. And uh, Drax the Destroyer, played by the former wrestler Dave Batista, uh, is the star of this show. This is uh, unexpected. Okay. And it's fun, and uh, for me, it's a four out of five star. No movie. kidding. Who, so who's this for? All families, all ages? Uh, I, I think so. I mean, yeah. maybe not young, young kids. It's, sure. it's probably a little bit too long for very small kids. Okay. But there's nothing really terribly graphic about it. Uh, so, you know. And that baby nine. Groot thing. Baby Groot. Yeah. It is like, right. that's the baby Groot stuff. The joyful <laughs> Do that look. Again? And, Do that again. Yeah, the, okay, good. The joyful <laughs> look on his face won me over. Wow, four stars. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Jeremiah Tower. Tell me yeah. about this one. Jeremiah Tower is probably the most famous celebrity chef that you've probably never heard of. Oh. And uh, in the 70s and Jeremiah 80s, he was Tower a sensation. Is. He is the man who pretty much created California cuisine. He is uh, one of the creators of the locavore movement. He is a guy who is enormously influential. Uh, Mario Batali, Anthony Bourdain, Martha Stewart are all in this documentary yeah. saying he is the man that changed the way America eats. This is wow. an enormously influential guy who we've, you know, sort of lost track of because in the 80s, at the height of success, uh, he had a restaurant called Stars that was one of the top grossing restaurants in the United States. He walked away and went to Mexico and disappeared for almost 20 years. I love stories. Like yeah, this. and he's back now. And he's written a memoir. Uh, there's this, uh, this film. But this is not a, a food network kind of look. There's no competition. They don't have to cook a rack of lamb in, you know, in 10 minutes. This is a, an in-depth look at this guy's life. And it's a fascinating life. He grew up in extreme luxury. His parents were very wealthy. When he was a child, he would travel on the Queen Mary. They'd spend three months at a time at the Savoy Hotel in London. But his parents ignored him. They weren't great parents. And so he grew up uh, in first-class dining rooms, but going to the early seating where his parents would go out and have cocktails and he would uh, and, and eat later. So the people that raised him, essentially, were waiters, bartenders, chefs, uh, all these people, and that's where he got his love of food. And uh, the movie delves into all of that. It's really good stuff. So it's three and a half. I, that is on my me. list for sure. Yeah. I love films. Like, and is there a twist in there? When There's we find a little out bit of a twist. Went? There's a little bit of a twist yeah. that I won't give away yeah. here. Uh, I mean, it's been written about a little bit. A little bit of a twist. Uh, but he's a really charismatic guy. You'll want to okay. see this. Story. Three and a half stars. Uh, let's talk about First Round Down. First Round Down is a Canadian movie about a, a hockey star in Hamilton. He's bound for the NHL. 
Uh, and then he has an injury and has to retire from the game. Uh, he leaves Hamilton, goes to Montreal. What people don't know is the 10 years he spent in Montreal, uh, he was a hitman. He comes back to Hamilton with, a, with the idea of setting his life right. He gets a job as a pizza delivery person. He tries to raise his younger brother, who he barely knows, and tries to rekindle his relationship with his former girlfriend. And, uh, of course, then you have the one last job that comes up, that he has to do one last job. This is like working-class Tarantino. It's a lot of fun. It's it's about the filmmaking here. The story, we've seen things like this before. Sure. But uh, the filmmaking is, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, as exciting as a Canadian hockey fight. Production? It's a Canadian production set cool. in, in, in Hamilton. Okay. Uh, and it wears its low budget proudly on its sleeve. It, it doesn't look low budget, but it yeah. it, it, it is about the characters, not big action scenes. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and it's three out of five stars nice. for me. Nice. We got uh, 30 seconds left to talk about I, Daniel Blake. I, Daniel Blake is a film from Ken Loach. Ken Loach, for 50 years, has made movies that are all about the human condition, oh. and, and typically speaking, in Britain. Uh, this one is about a man who's 59 years old. He's a woodworker. He has a massive heart attack, and he wants to go back to work, but because of a problem with his paperwork, he gets sucked into a Kafka-esque hell of bureaucracy democracy as he just tries to get the papers so he's cleared to go back to work or get some job assistance. And uh, it's grim, it's dreary, but it's quite brilliant. The performances are wonderful, and it's the kind of movie, unlike Guardians of the Galaxy or maybe First Round Down, that afterwards it's going to make you think a great deal about privatization of public uh, works and, and, and just how big government treats the average person. And for me, it's three and a half out of five stars. Wow, some great it's picks. It's a pretty good week. weekend and yeah. lots of lots of, of diversity here, lots of different things to see. And try and cram in all four. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Thanks. Film critic Richard Cross.